What's the story, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls? Welcome back to GA Fan TV, and today we are going to be previewing the Munster Senior Hurling Championship Final and the Leinster Senior Hurling Championship Final. And here we go, the Munster Final Showdown, the game that everyone is waiting for. Clare against Limerick in the Munster hurling final a repeat of course of last year's final which was a titanic battle a game that really went down to the war went down to extra time you remember tony kelly's point along the sideline and of course there's no shortage of history and and ties between these two sides when you think about it obviously last or earlier in the season claire's famous win against limerick ending their winning run and ending their unbeaten run which stretched back as far as 2019 obviously beating them on the gaelic grounds you think of some of the ties between the sides like you've got shamey flanagan on the limerick side paul flanagan his cousin who often makes an appearance for claire paul Kinnerk, who obviously is the assistant coach to john coyley he's had multiple ties with claire as we very well know he managed their um, he was a selector there for numerous years um, with both the seniors and the under 20s and of course was part of the team that last won an All-Ireland for Clare so there was so much sort of on the line between both of these two and for Galway and Kilkenny look it's two teams very familiar with each other and of course plenty of ties there as well with Henry Shefflin having a huge history with Kilkenny and um, it'll be interesting to see, can he get one over on the Cats this weekend? So this will be the preview, I'm going to be breaking down both matches, predicting what I think will happen, and um, yeah, if you're as excited for these matches as I am, let me know your predictions for both Clare and Limerick, and Galway and Kilkenny. Game obviously happening in the Gaelic grounds as well, which, you know, a lot of Clare fans not entirely happy with. Uh, the game was originally supposed to be fixed uh, for Parky Cueve, Turles was then mentioned, but in the end, it's in the Gaelic grounds, in the home stadium of Limerick. Um, so home advantage for Limerick in a Munster final. Very interesting that. And uh, But look, Clare, they beat them once already in the Gaelic grounds. Can they do it again? I think they have a great chance. And that is the game we'll start with first. Clare and Limerick in the Munster final. Uh, as I said, like hugely excited for it. I think there's so many facets to this game. Um, and like for Limerick to even be in this Munster final is kind of mad when you think about it. They were, I suppose, at one stage, possibly not qualifying for a Munster final, but possibly going out of the Munster Championship completely with the way that some results were looking, um, obviously with Tipperary Waterford and, and so on. Um, but an incredible, obviously, way it worked out. Limerick bet Cork and, of course, Waterford bet Tipperary, which meant that Limerick go into the Munster final. And it's been a strange one for Limerick because they've been far from their brilliant best. But the thing about Limerick is that they only lost to Clare by a point and then drew with Tipperary. Um, so, like, Limerick haven't been scintillating or brilliant, but if we cast our mind back to a couple of years ago, in particular the 2021 Munster final, I remember Limerick went into that final sort of, they weren't particularly brilliant against Cork in the semi finals, um, and they went into that final against Tipperary thinking, you know, Limerick haven't been at their brilliant best. They were a little bit sluggish throughout the league. They fell 10 points down at half time. But then in the second half, they came out and absolutely ripped Tipperary to shreds. Like, I feel like because of the fact that Limerick were 10 points down, it almost just woke them up. And sort of that was the moment where it clicked for Limerick. And I feel like for Limerick this season, you, they, they probably need a moment like that a little bit, something to really galvanise them, something to really get them going. And I think a Munster final in your own backyard versus Clare. The chance to become just the second ever county to win five Munster Senior Hurling Championships in a row. The other team was Cork. They did it in the 70s. And they also did it in the early 1900s as well. So for Limerick, history is on the line here. But for Clare, I mean, they haven't won a Munster Championship since 1998. To think of it, a county like Clare, the history of Clare, the fact they haven't won a Munster Championship since 1998 is kind of bizarre so it's a huge opportunity for them as well and with Clare they have an array of shooters and to be honest with you I think this game is just going to be back and forth neck and neck end to end I think it's going to be non-stop total scintillating hurling um it's going to be breathtaking and for Clare like we know what Tony Kelly brings but in fairness I think Clare have, have shown this season that they're more than just Tony Kelly Aidan McCarthy's been in uh, sensational form Mark Rogers has been very good as well. Tony Kelly scored two goals and 22 points leading up to this game. Uh, and Aidan McCarthy, I mean, who can remember his performance against Tipperary on the opening day scoring a goal and 13 points? So Clare have an array of options to hurt teams. I think Davey fits in around the middle, um, is a sensational hurler since coming into this side. I think he was very unlucky not to have won an All-Star last season. 
Peter Duggan, who has been quiet enough at times this year, but when you need him to step up, he has done. Ian Galvin, another fantastic option for this Clare team. Clare have an array of players, an array of options to hurt this Limerick side. And like Limerick, of course, without Sean Finn is a huge blow. To not have him, obviously, available through injury. Like Limerick have looked exposed at times defensively. Cork opened them up at times. Tipperary, you know, opened them up. And, and for Limerick, like defensively they haven't looked as strong this season as they have in previous seasons and like that is a worry for Limerick and in fairness to Limerick like they I suppose I remember speaking to Limerick fans sort of in preparation to some of the championship games and even the 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 league final between Limerick and Kilkenny in our preview with Johnny Kyo obviously of the Limerick leader like Limerick don't focus too much on the opposition players like they won't man mark Tony Kelly they'll, they'll let him do his thing hence why he tends to have brilliant games against Clare you know, they won't overly worry about the likes of Mark Rogers, the likes of Aidan McCarthy. They'll just focus on themselves. They'll let the Clare lads have the ball, have possession, have chances. And I think a big thing, in my opinion, for Clare is that they need to take their opportunities. They need to take their chances because, like in the past, like in big games against Limerick and even in that Munster final at times last year, sort of going down the home stretch. Their shooting did let them down. Their accuracy did let them down ever so slightly. And I think that is something, in my opinion, they'll need to watch. From a Limerick perspective, it's been, as I said before, an unusual season at the best of times. Like, we haven't seen the best of Kyle Hayes. We, you know, Keen Lynch has been in now the side, um, sometimes through injury. Uh, Shamie Flanagan has been excellent, I felt, for Limerick. I think he's been Limerick's best player so far, in my opinion. He scored four goals and seven points in his four matches, uh, and I think he's an extremely underrated hurler. Aaron Galan, as always, has been fantastic. 25 points so far in four matches. We haven't quite seen enough from him shooting for goals, or his goal threat hasn't quite been there so far in this season's championship but for Limerick it the whole sort of I suppose the whole pieces of the jigsaw just hasn't quite been there yet you're waiting for Keane Lynch to click into gear Cahill O'Neill has had a lot of good moments so far Dara O'Donovan I thought was outstanding the last day scoring three points and even Grode Hegarty stepped up and showed exactly what he's made of in fairness so like there's so much to this game like it, it's it's I think it's going to be end to end and I think it's really going to come down to who's going to have that mental strength going down the home stretch who's going to have that willpower accuracy in front of goal I think is going to be crucial one thing we know for certain in my opinion is that Limerick won't go away like they will not go away they will not bow down without a fight and neither will Clare like they will bring everything and I think even the fact that this game is going to be in the Gaelic grounds will motivate Clare that even a bit further so it's like it's it's so hard to call I think this game to be honest with you will go to extra time will go to distance penalties could even be on the cards here in my opinion like this genuinely could go to a penalty shootout um like I feel like Claire have what it takes to do it but Limerick like until they're gone it's very very hard to predict against them in my opinion and I think they open Cork up time and time again and I think Limerick have just slowly crept into it. And I think Limerick now, in my opinion, I think the pressure is off them. Although they're going for five in a row, like Clare decide who beat Limerick earlier in the season. I know Limerick are at home, but Clare haven't won this championship, haven't won the Munster Championship since 1998. And for Limerick, even if they lose this game, they'll play either Dublin or Carlo in an all-around quarter final. They're going to win that without question. So they're, they're effectively already in a semi-final. Um, and obviously the All-Ireland would probably mean more I'd imagine to Limerick than Munster give or take like with the fact that you know they're obviously chasing down Kilkenny's record in terms of the five in a row there a lot of the pressure is on Clare and in fairness to Clare like Clare for as good as they have been this season they do have a tendency every now and again to produce flat performances um, seen it in the All-Ireland semi-final against Kilkenny last year even in the quarterfinals to a certain extent against Wexford. So midfield battle is going to be extremely interesting with Davy Fitz and Cahill Malone in there for Clare. And of course, you've obviously got the, I suppose, mainstays of William O'Donoghue and Dara O'Donovan. Um, you know, that midfield battle is going to be extremely fascinating as well. And in fairness, I think that was one of the key ways that Limerick won the game the last time. I think Limerick, though, will just about edge it, in my opinion. I think by a point, I think penalties could really be on the cards here. I just fancy Limerick to have too much going down the home stretch and I just think for Limerick, the fact that they got beat by Clare already this year, to get beat by Clare twice in the one year, in the one championship, I just don't see it happening and look, this you know these two could play each other again after this, like there could, you know, it wouldn't surprise me if these two met each other again in the All-Ireland Final, I think it is the two best teams uh, in the country at the moment. 
on the basis of what we've seen. Um, and you could argue maybe Kilkenny are in that conversation as well. But I fancy Limerick. I just think they'll have a bit too much. Like Limerick, like they, 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 they still have a lot of their players in their prime. Although they have Sean Finn injured, a lot of their players are still at their peak, still at their best. And I fancy them to click into gear and get the job done. We've seen it. Towards the end of the court game, they started to ramp it up. Tom Morrissey started to score. Jeremy Burns started producing what we can see from him usually. And I fancy Limerick to do it. I don't think it will be by much. I think it could go down to a decision. It could go down to a free. The referees, refereeing performance is going to be extremely interesting here. And I think there's going to be a lot that really goes into this, in my opinion. But I just fancy Limerick by the smallest of margins to nick it. I think Clare have more than what it takes to win this one. And if Clare did win it, I wouldn't be entirely surprised. But I just think Limerick have that edge in these big, big games. And until they lose one of these big games, to be honest with you, I know they lost to Clare earlier in the year, but effectively it didn't matter because Limerick still went to the Munster final anyway. So you're looking at it and thinking, unless Limerick lose this game, I don't think the era is over. And I don't think the aura about Limerick is gone just yet, in my opinion. So a fancy Limerick by a point to have a bit too much for Clare and to retain the Munster Championship and win five in a row and break Clare hearts once again. We've got Galway versus Kilkenny in the Leinster final. I feel like the buzz around the Leinster final is definitely not the same as it is with the uh, Munster final. Um, I suppose for both Kilkenny and Galway, like this is really where we're going to see what either side is made of. And both of these two, you'd imagine, will really want to click into their best this weekend. Um, I suppose the difference... Like the, the intensity of Leinster is not there obviously with Munster as we very well know. So it's hard to judge both Kilkenny and Galway at the best of times. I mean Galway I thought were very poor for large parts against Dublin. They really struggled to get into the game. And they were actually quite lucky in the end possibly to uh, to even have gotten to this uh, Leinster final. Kilkenny on the other hand side as I said before they would job relegate Wexford. And they couldn't do that. They lost to Wexford obviously on the final day of the Leinster Championship. But in fairness, it was a game that was meaningless for Kilkenny. And actually, as a matter of fact, I actually thought they gave a lot against Wexford, in fairness. TJ Reid is Kilkenny's top scorer so far. Two goals and 45 points for him in five matches. Owen Cody has been excellent as well. Three goals and 13 points for him in five matches. And for Galway, Evan Nyland with 48 points in five games. And Connor Whelan with five goals and five points in five matches. Uh, he's really been rolling back the years for this Galway side as well. Brian Concannon's a player I've been very impressed with over the last couple of seasons. I think he's played very well in fairness. And you are looking at this Galway side and some of the, the threats and talents that they do have in the likes of Joseph Cooney. Dotty Burke obviously got a huge goal for Galway the last day as well. And uh, we've seen how well he can be defensively, but how well he can also be on the attack or on the counter-attack as well. Tom Monaghan's been a, a good player who's come into Galway in the last couple of seasons. Um, whereas Kil but Kilkenny, like, they have a wealth of options, from Owen Cody to TJ Reid to Billy Drennan, who's obviously come back into the team now as well. Adrian Mullen will be ruled out, I've heard, for the rest of the championship, which is a huge blow because I think he's a fantastic hurler and one of the most underrated hurlers in the country in my opinion but with that they still have Mossy Keown, Tom Phelan looked very good the last day as well in fairness David Blanchfield has come back into the side, Richie Reid is still there doing the business whether he's starting or coming off the bench and um, I just think Kilkenny have the edge over Galway in my opinion I think it's a big game for Henry Shefflin it's a big game for Galway Kilkenny have had the better of Galway in the last couple of seasons in Leinster finals and in big championship games and to be honest I expect that to be the same I think for Galway I've said it before I haven't been overly like convinced by Galway at times this year and it's been hard to really judge them like I don't think Kilkenny were at their best when they played them obviously in that in that round robin game they were flat enough I felt uh, against against Dublin for large parts they did enough to beat Wexford but I thought Wexford were very poor and we won't really learn a huge amount about Galway until this game and, and possibly even beyond that into a quarter final. So I don't know, uh, like I still think Galway are just missing something in my opinion. I feel like they're missing that X factor that maybe they had when Joe Canning was there. I think around midfield they can be quite weak at the best of times. Uh, and they do tend to have the odd lapses in concentration as we've seen in the Dublin game. So I think Kilkenny will turn up and I think Kilkenny will be too strong for them. And I think it might be a bit comfortable for Kilkenny to be honest with you I fancy Kilkenny by six or seven points to be too strong I think that Galway defense 
if they're struggling with some of the Dublin players in the likes of Donald Burke, Danny Sutcliffe and Keno Sullivan, then how are they going to be able to handle TJ Reid, Owen Cody, Billy Drennan running at this Galway defence? And I think Galway do have vulnerabilities about them and I think Kilkenny are going to exploit that and I think they're going to beat them by seven points in Crow Park. But yeah, let me know your predictions in the comments down below um, in terms of player of the week and uh, bet of the week. Bet of the week, I mean... I suppose only two games really to run through. Is there is there a better week? I don't really know. Um, Clare, I mean, Limerick will be the favourites against Clare. And in fairness, I think Clare have every chance of, of actually beating Limerick in fairness. Um, but yeah, in terms of player of the week, a very tough one, isn't it? I mean, you'd imagine it will come for the Munster final just with... And I think there'll be multiple players of the week in fairness. Um, I'm going to go for Aaron Galland to have a big game against Clare and, and really turn it on. I think... He's been, he's been excellent so far, as we said, 25 points so far, uh, Limerick's top scorer in the championship, um, or second top scorer in the championship, I should say, behind Shamie Flanagan. I think Shamie Flanagan could have, a, you know, he, he, re, he has been excellent so far, and I think a goal and a couple of points could maybe be the difference that he could bring to the table. But I think they're going to need the very best of Aaron Galan, and he hasn't scored a goal in the championship so far. I think he'll get one in this game, and I think he will be the player of the week for this weekend. But anyway, we'll go ahead and wrap this up here. Let me know your thoughts, your opinions in the comments down below. Let me know your predictions ahead of this weekend's games as well. Obviously, only two uh, lengths or two provincial finals uh, to look forward to. There will be a preview for this weekend's football action. That'll be out tomorrow, so make sure to stay tuned for that. But um, yeah, very excited for this weekend's games. Clare and Limerick, Galway and Kilkenny, both double headers on Sunday and um, hugely excited for them. So, yeah, leave a like, subscribe. Let me know your predictions in the comments down below. My name's Aaron. Speak to you all soon.